Hey everybody, Leslie here. And today I want to talk to you about a really intriguing connection between your cashmere sweaters, these Capra Hercus goats in the Himalayas, and the health of your hair. So what's the connection? It's that for decades, farmers in China, in the Himalayas, have known that these goats can produce an extra coat of hair if you simply administer melatonin to them. So here is a study that actually came out in 2021 that talks about this. And what's so fascinating is that while this has been known for decades in the cashmere goat industry, it's not something that we have thought a lot about with regard to our own hair health quality, and in particular, its potential application to a very distressing condition called alopecia areata, as well as androgenetic alopecia. So what are those two? What is alopecia? Alopecia is where you suffer some hair loss. So alopecia areata is where you have just, you know, maybe a, a little spot where you've lost hair entirely. Uh, it might be in a thin band. You might lose it in a kind of line, or you might lose it in a circular patch. Uh, or, you know, you could have little bits that have just kind of lost the, uh, the hair. And obviously in women, uh, you have other hair, you might be able to hide that. In men, uh, that shows up more if they're, uh, if they're cutting their hair quite close. And usually those men will just go ahead and shave their head. Now, androgenetic alopecia is different. That's really male pattern baldness. And that has to do with high concentrations of an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase. And that enzyme will take the testosterone in the body and convert it to something called dihydrotestosterone or DHT. And what DHT does is it miniaturizes the hair follicle. So the hair follicle is still there, but it just means that the, the hairs that come out get thinner and thinner, wispier and wispier. And you know what those little baby hairs look like? Well, this is what then happens in androgenetic alopecia. Those fine baby hairs then begin to appear and replace thicker um, hairs on the head. So that's the difference between alopecia areata and androgenetic alopecia. With androgenetic alopecia, women can get it as well because we women also produce not just estradiol and progesterone, but we also produce testosterone. And that's what gives us drive and libido as well. It's not, it's about a 10th of what men have, but we do still have it. And that means that some women, again, who have high 5-alpha reductase enzyme activity in their bodies, they can then have the same problem where the follicles of their hair are then miniaturized from the inside out. So how can we actually use what we've learned about these wonderful Capra Hercus goats? How can we use melatonin to actually reverse alopecia areata as well as androgenetic alopecia? Um, there is a really nice article which goes through about five different studies and I'll just show you that title here. It's called Topical Melatonin for Treatment of Androgenetic Alopecia. And what's great about this is that they looked at multiple, uh, they did multiple studies. Uh, they were multi-center studies in some cases where it wasn't just in a single location but it was in many different locations. They used both men and women because that is sometimes the problem with these with these clinical studies and trials is that they only use men because when women are introduced, our monthly menstrual cycle sort of screws up their data because of the fluctuations in our hormones. And so the studies described in this paper also include women, which is great. Um, there is one study in particular, which is really fantastic because they used 1800 individuals. Uh, at two different centers. And that really then shows statistical significance. In other words, we can trust what came out of these studies. So let me just give you some of the takeaways from this really cool paper. Um, so in 35 men with androgenetic alopecia who had topical melatonin application, 
55% of patients showed an increase in hair density of 30% after three months. Those who continued for six months, of those who continued for six months, 58% of patients showed a density increase of 41%. That's really great. Now, what about women? Because women are quite important as well. So in a separate study of 60 men and women with hair loss, a significant reduction in hair loss was observed in women. In a large three-month multi-center study with those 1,800 volunteers in 200 centers, the percentage of patients with a two- to three-fold positive hair pull test decreased from 62% to only 8%. So what does that mean? So that means that when these 1800 people first came into the center, there was someone there saying, okay, I'm just gonna pull and see if the hair comes out. And so when they did that, if hair did come out, that was very noticeable and that was an indication that the hairs were in what's called the telogen or shedding phase. So the fact that 62% of those 1800 patients actually had positive hair pull test, that's a huge amount. That's two thirds of all of those 1800. And then when they were treated with melatonin afterwards, only 8% had a positive hair pull test. So that's really quite exciting. Um, in addition, they showed a significant reduction in the degree of severity of alopecia after both 30 and 90 days. Finally, a decrease in seborrhea and seborrheic dermatitis was also observed. So this is really quite exciting because it demonstrates that simply putting a very, uh, a very small topical um, solution of melatonin onto rubbing it into the scalp on a daily basis in the evening seems to work in, in terms of increasing both density of hair as well as making sure that that hair is in the antigen phase. And these are all things that have been observed in the goat population. <laughs> so, um, so what about those individuals who say, but melatonin is a sleep hormone. I don't wanna fall asleep. Well, this is why they put this topical solution uh, on in the evening. And then the next question that often people have is, well, we normally produce melatonin naturally in the pineal gland. So that is this gland that is P-shaped and right between the eyebrows. Uh, in Ayurveda, they call it the third eye. And that uh, there is this argument that if you supplement with any kind of melatonin, whether it's topical or oral, that you will downregulate your body's own production of it. In other words, you will decrease your body's own natural production of it. Uh, possibly to the point where you lose the ability to produce it. I have heard that before, and personally, I think that as we get older, our ability to produce a great number of hormones, whether it's melatonin or thyroid hormone or estrogen, progesterone or testosterone, that just all falls off a cliff, especially for us women. And uh, if you uh, don't want, if you believe that taking these things orally or topically might hurt your natural production, which it, it could, the only thing is you're not gonna feel great because the reality is your body just doesn't produce enough and that becomes manifest in the aging process. So for me personally, I prefer to supplement both with hormone replacement therapy, whether that's uh, progesterone, estrogen, or testosterone, thyroid as well, but I also do supplement with melatonin. Now, this particular study actually looked at that question. If you put melatonin on topically, and remember, this is an area of great vascularity. There are lots of blood vessels in the scalp. So it's gonna draw that in and it could actually circulate that melatonin systemically in the body. But what, this, what these studies demonstrate are actually that once daily topical application in the evening showed no significant influence on endogenous serum melatonin levels. So that means that actually the melatonin was being used 
locally. It was not being distributed systemically. It was not showing up in the blood plasma so that when blood was drawn and they compared the individuals who had the topical melatonin with just controls off the street, um, they were exactly the same. In other words, taking topical melatonin does not seem to affect your own endogenous or internal production of melatonin. So how exactly is melatonin working here? Well, it appears that melatonin stops the conversion of testosterone into dihydrotestosterone. And that is really very exciting. So it seems to act as an agonist to that 5-alpha reductase enzyme. So any of you who suffer from male pattern baldness or women who have something similar, you have high 5-alpha reductase activity in your bodies, and you might recognize this because your male relatives all suffer from male pattern baldness, if you also suffer from hair loss as a woman, then this melatonin could be a real godsend for you because it will inhibit the activity of that enzyme that miniaturizes the hair follicle. And the same study also says that melatonin inhibits the miniaturization of the hair follicle when that 5-alpha reductase enzyme is present. So I think this is very exciting for those who suffer from male pattern baldness uh, or women who also suffer from this androgenetic alopecia, um, which is related to male pattern baldness, because it says that there's something that can be done. You can take topical melatonin to just inhibit that enzymatic process. Um, so I hope you guys have all enjoyed learning about the connection between your cashmere sweater, those cute little Himalayan goats, and thick and glossy hair. If you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below. I will do my very best to answer the first questions that are asked within seven days after release of this video. And if you like this video and would like to watch others like it, please hit on that subscribe button. Have a great rest of your week, everyone. Take care.